Hi guys, it's me Danielle Danny Buttons and I'm back today with another tag video. I'm very late to the game and it makes me laugh because every single person that I've seen do this video has said, I'm really late to the game, but I'm gonna do it anyway. So I too am late to the game and I'm going to do it anyway. What is it you say? This is the Coloring Discoveries tag created by Emma Colors 2020. I will link her down below, of course. And it's basically all about stuff you discovered in the year 2020. So obviously, being a few days from February, I am especially late, but it, I, I really am laughing. Every single video, I saw like six videos today of this tag, and each person was like, I'm late. And I'm like, haha guys, I'm later. So I too am going to say that I'm probably the last person to do this. And then I'm sure I'll find somebody else doing it after me. So there's my little intro to that. I am not sure if I'm gonna actually get to color while I'm doing this because I do have a lot of stuff to show you, but I've been working on this page for like two hours. So I figured I'd keep it out. And if I have some questions that I'm just chatting, I would work on it. This is from Mindware's color, what is it called? Color Quest? Color Counts books. And this is Paradise, so I'll talk about that more later. But one of my goals for the month was to do a double page spread. And I thought I would take it easy on myself and do this type of double, but this page is very hard and take me forever. So there's all of that disclaimer. Again, I'm very behind on watching videos, on errands, uh, doing tags, things like that, because January has been a very rough month for me, but I'm trying to get back into the swing of it. I'm excited to get the opportunity to start pre-filming again and get even ahead of the game. And yes, I'm hoping for a much better February. So this tag has six questions, but they are in-depth ones and they were really difficult. So I'm gonna talk to you about my choices and my process and things like that. Uh, question number one were what were your five favorite supply purchases in the year 2020? This was hard for me because I don't buy that many supplies. I'm the kind of person that likes to have one of each category of thing. I did manage to find five, but it was difficult. And in fact, I don't know a lot of these things I'm about to show you I received as gifts. So there's that. I also bought or brought out one of each thing as like a representative for that category. So I didn't have to completely cover my desk and could attempt to continue coloring while I'm going. So number one, let's see, I have the Holbein pencils. So for my birthday, Samuel and my husband purchased me the 50 set of pastel Holbeins and the Japanese pencil that are apparently now being sold at Blix stores here in the US and he purchased the pastels because I really have wanted to try them. I've only used them one and a half times so far. So I finished one page and I started another, but I really am loving the colors that exist. I have been too lazy to use pencils at all, but I, I really like pastels. So I'm happy to have them and I can't wait to actually get my budding gear and do more with them. And they're so pretty. I feel like you can even tell the quality from this one representative pencil that I have here. They all have names. This is Cherry Blossom, and I just really like them a lot, even if I don't use them. Like, they're just pretty, and they're like a fancy item for me to look at, if I'm honest with you. And of course I am, so that is number one. I also put Inconics on my list. Here's my Inconic representative. Uh oh. So these are a fine liner by Arteza. And I previously only had the Statler Tri Plus fine liners, which I do love, but I use them for bullet journaling. So I never had fine liners that I purchased with the intention of coloring. And I, a lot of my answer for a later question were books that needed fine liners. I'll just put it that way and not spoil it, even though I'm sure, again, since I'm now officially the last person to do this tag, um, you have probably have an idea of what I'm gonna say. But that's the fine liners, and I do really like them. I think I purchased the biggest set. It was like the 120 set, and I got it on Lightning Deal, 
So it was a good deal. I've really been introduced to Arteza altogether and I'm realizing now there's another Arteza supply that I totally should have put as one of my five, but it is too late. So I'm not gonna switch it out. Just have to wait till 2021 because I didn't, I don't think I actually, I purchased it in 2020, but didn't receive it till 2021. So that makes sense anyway. All right. But um, yeah, I've been enjoying the Inconics. My only problem with the Inconics is really not a problem with them at all. It's just the case I have for them is absolutely massive. So it's like hard to carry around those massive, massive pens. So since I've moved back into the office, my desk has remained relatively clean. So if I can keep that up, I feel like I'll be able to use whatever supplies I want. So that's the goal is to be able to use my belongings this year. So we're on pace for that already. Number three, uh, I got, ooh, these I do have with me, the Jane Davenport palettes. So here are the three of them. I think there is one more that exists and it's like a metallics, but I'm not really super interested in that one. I actually, two of these were gifts. So I think I purchased myself the blue one because I was like, I'll use that for backgrounds and skies. And then Ren from Ren's Coloring Craze sent me the birthday suit one, which is the skin tones. And then for Christmas, I received the lit up, which is like the reds and purples, which is why it's not even out of that case yet. So I love to use these for backgrounds. It just makes backgrounds super quick and easy. And I love super quick and easy. So that's like part of my brand is that I just want shortcuts for everything and I feel like they still look good. And now that I have all the colors, I'm very excited because I was doing pretty good with just the blues, but every once in a while I wanted something different. So I got all three. I don't know if they're sold in stores anymore, but they have them on Amazon. They're about anywhere from like 12 to $16 each, which I think is really reasonable. Um, I don't know how long they'll last, but I've definitely done multiple pages with them and have not really noticed any dent yet. So I think we're gonna do good. Then I have, this is the only thing I'm not sure if I got this year or not. I'm pretty sure, or by this year I mean 2020, because again, we're in 2021. Um, this is the Liquitex Professional Iridescent Medium. This is basically just glitter paint. I think it's intended to be mixed with other supplies to make other things glittery, but I just use it on its own. I wanted to buy it to make my own Wink of Stella pens and that did not work out. Um, I probably can try again, but my one attempt did not work out. So now I just paint directly with this stuff and I like it a lot because you can see this is ginormous. This is going to last me for years and years and years unless I spill it all over or something. If I do, it will be a magical glittery spill, but I love this stuff. And I think this was probably like eight or $10, which for the amount you get in here, I think is a great deal. So I'm gonna try to link things down below. Right now I'm filming at like 9.45 p.m the day before it goes up, which is better than I have been doing. So hopefully I will have time to link stuff. I've been filming like right before bed and then I've just run out of time before publishing, but I'm gonna try to link stuff, we will see. And then the last thing is what I'm coloring with now. So this representative is just number 22 on the page I'm doing, but these were also a gift from Lauren Loves Color and these are the Shuttle Art Permanent Markers. I don't know what happened to me, but basically since November, my love of permanent markers has skyrocketed and that's all that I wanna color with. I actually was coloring with the Sharpies and then I got a set of Parkus for my birthday from my friend Dave, but the Parkus were leaving um, red marks everywhere and it was miserable and I was very mad at them. So I now have these beautiful shuttle arts that I've been using the crap out of. I'll say it, I'll say the bad word. And I love them and it's to the point where this set, about half of the markers are starting to dry up and not because they're bad markers, because I use them that much. So I keep mentioning these as often as I can because that's how much like I'm in love with them. So I need to thank Lauren again and 
continue to use these on my current page. Um, so yeah, really my Sharpie game or my permanent marker game went crazy high in 2020. Question number two is your five favorite book purchases. So I basically got all of my information from my Instagram and I actually just posted a poll today that was like, should I post every page I do on Instagram or just like my favorites? Because currently I basically post like buddy colors. I post all of them and then I'll post my top favorite pictures. So I don't necessarily post all my color by numbers and things like that. So far, everybody has said post everything. You might, if you're seeing this like right when it's coming out, you might have time to still vote in that. So that's that's that on that. But um, I've been using that to kind of see what I actually got in 2020 to hopefully make my information accurate. So what I learned is I need to color a larger variety because a lot of what I'm posting is the same people and the same things like that. So the easiest choice for me, my favorite book of 2020 is obviously <laughs> Yippee Kawaii by Danny Banania, Fun Usual Suspects. Like, are you surprised? I don't think you should be. Apparently, since I received this in May, I've colored 15 pages in here, which is exactly half of this book. And I'm very excited to have done that. And again, volume two should be coming out super soon. So I'm really hoping to color even more in there and um, maybe even finish that up. I think I'm being one of those people that's like, I can't finish this because then it will be over. But I'm hoping then volume two will be out and then it will be alive again. So that's my goal there and that seems obvious. Um, then I wanted to pick some Disney books because of course they're some of my favorite books that I own. So I picked two, but first up is this guy, whoop, Disney Babies. This is my first square book from Disney and I have since gotten like six more. I don't, I, I went crazy, okay? So I love these. I've been doing a lot of X Method, which is again where the Ink Onics have come in super handy. There's just a bunch. This is one of the books I think that I'm hoping to finish this year. Um, yeah, this is just so much fun. I think this is my favorite of all of the ones that are in this series, but we will have to see as I do more. There's that. Um, I guess I'll just talk through all of them instead of opening and closing the markers. Then I got this book. This was also a gift from my friend Dave, Christmas Delights by Alice Mills Publishing. And I'm obsessed. I really went crazy in December and did a ton of these pages. And I purchased the other two books that are available in this series by this publisher. And I'm just absolutely in love with them. I saw them on other channels and I was like, I don't think I'll like that. And then I got one and I was like, oh yeah, I like that a whole lot. So I highly recommend these and especially the Christmas one. I'm hoping to do more pages in this throughout this year for Jolly Coloring. Then this is really the whole series, but I have 50 winter miniatures out uh, here with me now. I got all four of these in November, I think like very quickly one after another. And I think three out of the four were gifts. So I was very, very lucky, but I have this winter one out right now. There's a sneak peek of one I did this month. I love her miniatures. Actually, when I'm filming this, she just came out with a new romantic miniatures today and I purchased it. So I should be getting it to Wednesday and I'll be doing a flip through on that one, but they're just so cute. And I just want to do all of these. I was going to make it a personal goal. See, this is where I messed up. Makes me sad. Um, a personal goal to like try to finish all four of these books this year. But that was crazy. And I'm glad I didn't. Because that would be 200 pages of just this. So pretend I never said that. That's not the goal. <laughs> Next up, my other Disney book is Disney Portraits Volume 1. This... Did I buy this myself? Yes, I did. I wasn't sure if I bought it or if Sam purchased it for me, but I bought it. So here, no, I won't give you a sneak peek. This is basically just portrait styles of a lot of the characters and I really love it. There's a lot of cool guys in here that you don't necessarily see in American books, which we've gone over a whole bunch. Melody, Ariel's daughter, Blue, and I just really like 
that it's not a whole bunch of extra. It's mostly just their portrait and I guess a border. But I'm excited. There's the cover page to lit Merida, Merida. Okay, I'm excited to work in here and try to color Disney that is not color by number. And this actually leads really well into the next question, which is what is a supply or book that's too precious that you have not used? And what I tend to do is my most precious books I have a whip in because I'm like, I need to use it. And then I don't actually finish it. So the one book that so far definitely fits that bill is the silhouettes. So this is the Disney book. And basically it's like the character. I hope you can see because uh, I can't really see my camera. It's the silhouette of the character and then like about them around it. I don't really know why this is about Goofy, but okay. Maybe we'll find a better example. So this is Remy from Ratatouille. So all around him is like ingredients for cooking and cakes and food tools and things like that. So I don't know what scares me about this book. I think I'm worried because you're not coloring the character themselves, but you kind of have to get their vibe from the surroundings. I don't know. I don't know what it is that worries me so much, but I have yet to work in here. Here's Boo from Monsters, Inc. And so obviously like Mike and Sully. So this one might be an easier one comparatively to get the vibe, but that's that on that. Um, I'm hoping to one day work in here, but I'm happy to have it either way, if I'm honest with you. And I'm planning on purchasing more of these types of books soon. So number what question four so five new channels that you found in 2020 as everyone else has been saying this is a very difficult one because i have met so many amazing new people this year people with channels and people with just instagrams so it's really hard to narrow it down so i'm just going to mention five because that is the prompt and if you're not mentioned maybe i've been watching you for longer or maybe I can only mention five. So um, number one is Emily from Color Me Impressed. She's a newer channel in the scheme of things, but she has become one of my best buddies. And I feel like I bother her all the time about lots of things, coloring and non-coloring related. So we, yeah, I just really, I'm so happy to have found her channel and her friendship. And I remember I'm gonna expose her she messaged me, like the first time she ever messaged me, she was like, oh, I don't know if you know this, but I think she saw showed me a Hanalyn diamond dot or something like that. And I was like, oh yeah, I've seen it. She was like, oh my God, I can't believe you answer your fans. And I was like, get out of town, my fans. So now it's my friends. So I just think that's funny because in the grand scheme of things, I still feel like a small channel. I'm just like, I've been around a long time, so that makes me laugh and I've called her out now. Number two is Jamie from Jamie's Coloring Love. Obviously she tagged me, but she was really my first person to reach friendship tier. And I've said this every time I can, that she's like the reason I realized you could be friends with people from YouTube, which looking back seems really silly, but before Jamie, I didn't really talk to anybody besides commenting on videos. And I messaged her and became friends with her. And then I was like, wait a dang minute. I can talk to people, what? So like she changed the whole game for me. And yeah, so I'm very grateful to her, of course. Number three is Shayna from Shayna in Colorland. She is my other co-host from Buddy Colorathon because she was another one of my first buddies here on YouTube. And I think it just like worked out, like fate brought it together that I found her channel when I did and we became friends. And now she's like popping off and she's getting all these big numbers. And I'm like, no, I was there first. I found her before she was famous. I don't know if that makes any sense. I feel like I can't color and talk about this because I'm distracted and sounding foolish, but I'm so happy to be friends with her too. And we share a love of Disney and I really, I, I'm going to visit her. I hope to be there next January, next February, one year, starting the countdown 
And um, that like extra excites me because that's gonna be like an in-person real, whew, I can't, I can't. Next up is Penny from Pebbles Adult Coloring. And I just watched her video today and she mentioned me and she said that like she made her channel to do my um, scavenger hunt and I was like, that's so cute. And I appreciate it so much. And I just remember when I made that first scavenger hunt, I had a few people make their channels because of it. And that just felt super cool. And I just think she has so many cool ideas. And um, I've enjoyed watching her videos. And I know she's also a Disney buff. And we're going to buddy color in Disney Vitro. I don't know when, but I know we're going to do it. She's so talented though, cause she's like, oh, I'm so slow. Yeah, because you're busy making fantastic pieces of art when I'm over here coloring by number or straight coloring on grayscale. So there's that on that. You should definitely go over there and watch her if you haven't. And my last person I'm mentioning right now is somebody who's also super new and it is Lauren from Lauren Loves Color. Honestly, once she gifted me these markers and changed my coloring life, I don't know how I couldn't mention her, but she is just like, just started her channel or at least switched it to adult coloring. And I feel like she's already crushing the game and she's already like talking to a bunch of publishers and like just making really cool videos. And I'm, I'm blown away because I can't imagine what she's, her videos are gonna be like after a year. You know what I mean? Like she's already so cool and creative. It can only get better from here. So I think you should be watching her and all the other ladies that I've mentioned and I will be linking everybody down below, of course. So now I'm back to things. No, I'm not yet. I just realized I didn't finish this answer. So this is gonna be fun. Um, yeah, definitely follow all those ladies down below and if I missed anybody and you want to shout anybody out or if you have a channel and you don't think I watch you yet, please be sure to let me know down below. I don't think you can link it. I think links get automatically blocked, but you can definitely comment and I am going to attempt to get back on my commenting game. Again, I'm so sorry. I feel like January has just been so terrible for me that... I've like not been commenting, I've not been communicating with anybody, I've not been linking things, and I really wanna get back at it. So hopefully, comment down below and I will chat with you there. Next question is five new artists or new to you artists in the year that you've discovered and liked. And I apparently only wrote down three. I don't know what happened. I can think of a fourth one off the top of my head. I guess I can think of five. Okay, so. Number one is going to be Danny Banani from Yippie Kawaii. Um, that one's easy. Again, I feel obsessed with her. I feel like it's too much, but I just love all of her work because besides the coloring book, she also has an Etsy shop where she makes some really cool clay stuff and she makes bookmarks and she makes stickers and I just have it all. I have her book which I'm actually gonna be reviewing soon. I just wanna to talk to her and make sure I do it in a uh, respectful way. Not respectful. Obviously, when you're reviewing, you're gonna be respectful. Ugh, I'm upset that I wordoed like that, but I wanna make sure I'm reviewing it in a way that doesn't give too much information away. You'll see what I mean. I'm making no sense. Again, I don't know why I thought I could color and talk at the same time. But you'll see that hopefully very soon. So I love her. And if you love her artwork in the book, you should definitely check out her other products because you can get a lot of those images on other things. And that's super cool. So her. Two, April Amber. I don't have her books on me because I don't understand why. I just skipped this question, I guess, when I was preparing. But April Amber makes the... Chibi Girl books. Uh, there's three volumes out. She has other books, but I just have those three. And those are the books I'm currently split coloring with Samuel and others. So I really enjoy them for that. They're the perfect um, 
level. They're kind of simple, but in a good way because that's the amount of work I like to do for my split colorings. Usually half a page will take me 20 to 30 minutes and that's exactly what I want and they're super, super cute and it's a nice variety. If you have not seen those books yet, just go to any of my um, finished pages, but I recommend volume three is my favorite. So there's that. Um, next, I also, I think all signs point to I discovered Belba Family in the year 2020 and I love all of their books. I have like six of them already, a bunch, and I just, they're great. I really love X Method in their square pixel books and um, I love the size of their pixels. I love a lot of the subjects that they come out with. Um, I find that so often books are just like animal themed or um, landmark themed. And I'm so picky that I don't always like those things. So Belba has a few books that are just general books. So they might have like ice cream pictures or some animals or some um, just like a hat, <laughs> you know what I mean? And I love the variety. And yeah, they keep coming out with really cool technique books and I just can't wait to see what else they come out with and continuing to build my collection from them. Along the same lines, number four is Color Questopia. I don't know if they existed before 2020, but if they did, I found them in 2020 and they make really awesome color by number books too. Um, they originally were doing super specific books and I thought it was super cool. So I have like a whole turtle book, a shark book, a gnome book, and now they seem to be getting a tiny bit more general. So they have the few Christmas books and I don't know what else came out super recently. They just came out with a Valentine's Day one and they really as a company have been listening to colorists and I think everyone has appreciated that. So they have been changing the way they number things and they've been, uh, they came out with black backgrounds and I feel like they're really honing in on their work and they're gonna give us some cool stuff. So apparently I did not come up with five. So those are four new artists to me. Uh, I really continued to love um, Hannah Lynn for a lot of the year. I continued to love all of these Disney books. I unfortunately don't know the original, not original, the artist for them. They are listed in the Disney books, but I can't remember any off the top of my head. So I apologize for that. But Disney takes up about 50% of my coloring and then 40% is uh, colored by number. And then the last 10% is everything else. So that's the truth there. All right, now the final question is your six favorite pages from 2020. So this is probably my number one. I might stand for this part so I can make sure you're seeing everything. This is Color It, Colors of the Decades. I, I love this page. I don't, let's see. <laughs> wow. So my stack of books is now over there and giving me shadow, which is fun. Also, I something is leaning on the remote and I've opened Hulu on the TV, but I absolutely love this page. I think it is so pretty. I did most of this, actually, so I did this blue or green, whatever color you wanna call it, with watercolor. I did everything else with Sharpies. So I don't, oof, I love it so much. I made her grayscale. I just think that's the coolest page and this took me forever to do and I like the back too. So that is page number one. Uh -huh. Where can I put these? That was my first aha uh -huh of the year, I think. Okay, the, a funny story. The next three are all mermaids. So don't know how that happened, but here is my girl Ariel from Disney Vitro. This, I did a four part color and chat on my channel and I can't even get it all on screen, but I love this book. I need to desperately do more because volume two is coming and I'm gonna buy it. But here's Ariel and I love it. Like I didn't do the most, it's just pencil 
and my blender pencil. So most of this is like two colors per area, but I just love how it came out and I took a lot of effort to do it. So that also bumps it up on the list. My next mermaid is from Daisy Joy Mermaid book. And it is this lovely mermaid. I love this mermaid. I just love the colors and I used a bunch of stickles, which I'm trying to show you. Hopefully you're seeing that. I think I just like using purple as the background and I have to like lean into that. So I love the sparkle. Ah, I use the iridescent medium on the sea foam, which hopefully you can see. It's definitely like stickles are definitely bolder, but that's just like what stickles are. They're super, super bold. The iridescent medium definitely gives you a nice shine and it looks better in person than it does on camera, of course, because cameras have not caught up to glitter yet, but I love it a lot. I love it a lot. It's so pretty. So, and my last mermaid is from Mermaids in Paradise by Denise Klett. I did a video on this. This was how I watercolor was the video. And I just think this is another fabulous mermaid. I love how my blending came out on this. So I used three colors on her hair, three colors on her tail, three colors on the fish. And then I think again, my iridescent medium for all of the bubbles and such. So I thought that was a super fun one. Isn't it so pretty? I want my hair to look like that. I definitely have the volume, but I want the colors, you know? So, and then I had to pick a Disney, and it might be a surprising one, but this is Le Grand Classiques Volume 2, and I absolutely love this rabbit page. So when I was looking at these books to purchase them, this page is the reason I bought this volume first. So volume two, I think I bought two and three as my first ever Grand Classics purchase in 2018 maybe. And I didn't do this page until now and I don't know why I waited so long, but I just love it. I just think it's so vibrant and it's so good looking. And I'm happy to have finally done it and sad that it's over, which is exactly what I'm talking about. But I think volume two is my favorite of the like the tombs and a lot of the reason is the Winnie the Pooh pages and this rabbit page so love that a whole ton and finally I picked a page from Sagor Oxagner um this is another one of like my holy grail books that I've been working in very slowly so I did two pages in this book this whole year which yikes, but this is the one that I love. I used my ink tents for this whole thing and I actually put the frame in myself, which I thought was super fancy. So that's why it made it up to the number six slot or top six, they're really not in order, but I just thought that that looked really cool and I love that I did it because um, for this one, obviously you had to go right up to the edge, but for this one, I framed it in. So I was inspired on Instagram and I credited the person on Instagram, but I don't remember now. I apologize. So you can find it on my Instagram. So I did that one too. And apparently that's what's up next because I'm trying to go in order for this book. But that is it. I feel like I've been talking for 102 minutes. So I apologize if this is super long. Again, as one of the last people to do this tag, I'm not going to tag anybody, but... You should do this if you haven't, if nothing else, to prove me wrong. So let me know if you're going to do this tag down below so I can check it out. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. Like this video and subscribe. I'm a fun time. Comment down below anything you want to comment. And I'll be back again in two days with something different. Bye, guys.